Hey there, if you had a bad night of sleep and you woke up hurting almost everywhere, this is the class for you. Come on, get on your mat or on your carpet and let's work out some of those kinks. My name is Sandra and um, you ever had one of those mornings where you wake up because you did not sleep so well and you might have like a little crick in the neck or body parts hurt from sleep. This is the class for you. So we're going to work out all of those issues because that's how I woke up this morning and I thought, you know what, someone else probably did too. So go ahead and take a comfortable seat. Sit up nice and tall. Give me a deep inhale and let it go. Another deep breath in. Loud exhale. And then just sit for a moment. Try to be still. And then go ahead and take the arms all the way up. Bring the palms together. Exhale them home to your heart. And set your intention for your practice. When you're ready, you'll release the hands. So I believe I read that somewhere up to a third of our lifetime is spent sleeping. Now imagine if that one third isn't done well, right? So we're gonna start from the head, work our way down through the body and kind of get out those kinks. So when I woke up this morning, I couldn't turn my head at all. Um, and so if you're in that situation, you need to practice ahimsa, right? Pay attention to your body and do what you can, but we're gonna, Try to loosen everything up. So sit up nice and tall through the spine. And then just turn to look over that right shoulder. Breathe right here. Relax. Don't let the shoulders ride up to help you out here. And when you get to an exhale, slowly bring the head to center. Stay for the inhale. Exhale, turn to the left. Wait for an exhale again. Bring the head back to center. Inhale the arms up. And so when we sleep funny, which really isn't funny, right? Hands to the heart, or we sleep wrong, and I don't know about that expression either, Release the hands. Um, go ahead, sit up tall. Hang on, I lost my train of thought. Turn your head to the right. I was thinking too far ahead. What I want you to do on this side, keep the head turned to the right, but see if you can lift the chin toward the ceiling. So we're not going super high. You know, it might be an inch or two. Relax the shoulders. We're going to hold it right here. Anyway, what I was going to say is when you sleep funny or wrong, your body could respond in a myriad of ways, right? Now, go ahead, bring the chin back down, head to center, drop the chin forward, pull the shoulders back, and just pause right here. And then bring the head back up, turn the head to the left, relax the shoulders, and then lift that chin towards the ceiling. So there's this Zen story about a student who asks her master, what is enlightenment? And the master says, when hungry, eat, when tired, sleep. And so 
I'm adding on, when you don't sleep well, or you sleep funny or wrong or weird, or you get up on the wrong side of the bed, you've got to stretch. That's what we're going to work out on the mat today. Bring the chin back down, head to center. Inhale the arms. Exhale to the heart. Release the hands. Take the palms down on top of the knee so we have a little bit of leverage and something to hang on to. I want you to sit up tall again. Drop the chin. Are you still sitting up tall? That's a legitimate question, right? Because sometimes when we drop the chin, we round out. So just the chin. And now you might be able to see the top part of your chest here. Lift this part of the chest right uh, about what, I don't know, an inch or so below the collarbone, lift that part of the chest to the chin, not the other way around. So I just gently drop my head and now I wanna lift my chest or collarbone upwards. Hold it here, heavy shoulders. Start to deepen the breath. Good, bring the head back up. Inhale the arms, exhale to the heart. Palms on top of the knees. This time I do want you to round out the spine as you drop the chin, lean way back. And so for each of these stretches, breathe into where you're feeling a little bit of uh, chatter. I was going to say agony with it. That's not fair. Like I can feel all this. I woke up sore everywhere as though I had worked out every part of my body, which I can attest to did not happen and hasn't in a long time. And so we just got to breathe into those spaces. Okay. Come on back up. Sit up tall. Shoulders up. Now, as you take the shoulders back, I want you to kind of pause after you go like an inch down and pull the shoulder blades in and then continue the shoulders down while the shoulder blades are in and then relax. Yes. Inhale up. The shoulders start to come back, pull the shoulder blades in, rotate down, let go. Give me three more. Linking the movement with the breath. Perfect. Take the arms up. Exhale to the heart. Now, if you have a strap, go ahead and grab it. Um, I'm thinking here. If you do not, a towel, a sweatshirt, um, scarf, uh, belt, maybe, um, kind of looking around to see if I have anything else. If you have zero of those, don't worry about it. You can still do what we're doing. It's just going to feel a little different. So I'm going to take the strap. I folded mine in half so that I don't get clobbered with the other, with the end, with the buckle. And I'm going to put the strap behind my neck. So let's do this. If you don't have a strap or a towel or anything I named, let's go ahead and interlace the fingers and take them behind the neck. I think that will help you feel this as well. And so all I'm gonna do here, make sure you're sitting up straight. And if you can't maintain this, you might want to come onto your knees and your shins. That might be easier to keep the spine nice and long. So I'm gonna grab on to the strap. And as I pull the strap forward gently, I'm gonna let my head fall back so the hands are pulling, head is tipping. So if you're using your hands, kind of the same thing, tip the head back and feel a little bit of tension as the hands pull into the head. And then let's come back to center. Deep inhale. Big exhale. Make sure you have that length. Grab onto the strap. Start pulling the strap forward as the head tips back. And if you want to, you can kind of lean back just a little bit more so we get some more extension in the pose. So
So whatever prop you have behind your neck is cradling it, it's supporting it. Nice, go ahead, come back to center. Keep the strap where it is, drop the arms, inhale them up, exhale to the heart. Take the hands behind you, yoga mudra. Let the palms find each other first, fingers interlace. Draw the shoulders in, shoulder blades. Ah, perfect. And then just kind of lift the gaze a little bit here. So remember, everything I'm offering is a suggestion. Anything that causes pain, you switch it up. When I said everything hurt when I woke up, I meant it. So coming into yoga mudra, I feel pain running through my left elbow. Um, it's not enough that I feel like I need to come out of the pose, but you have to make those decisions for yourself, right? So anything you need to change, you give yourself permission to do so. All right, release the arms. Ah, take them forward and just round out the back, drop the chin. Give me a deep inhale, cleansing exhale. And we're gonna sit back up. So again, however you wanna stay seated, if you came onto your heels like I did and you wanna stay here, that's fine. If you're um, in Sukhasana and you wanna stay there, that's fine. You wanna sit on a prop, you're all good. We're still working with the head and the neck, loosening up all of those muscles. So I want you to grab on to both sides of the strap again. And if you don't have a prop, I'm gonna show you what to do um, in that case. So my, Left hand, I'm just gonna grab a little bit lower. I'm sitting up tall, turn my head to look over the left shoulder. Breathe. This time, will you drop the chin? Oh yeah, I feel that. Bring the chin back up, head to center. Go ahead and switch to the other hands a little lower. Sit up tall. Turn the head to look over the right shoulder. Drop the chin. Lift the head back up, come back to center. Now, I want you just to let go of the strap for a second, but leave it there. All right, turn the head to look over the left shoulder. Right hand is reaching underneath the strap that's hanging on my right side to grab the left strap. Left hand coming across, now it should be on top, to grab the right side of the strap. Okay, as the right hand pulls down, I'm gonna lift my left arm and elbow, and I'm actually gonna bring this strap kind of across the bottom of my chin to help get a little bit more stretch here. So if you don't have a prop, left hand simply reaches over to the side of the face and helps draw the head a little bit further into that twist, right? So you're, you're being careful. You're sitting up tall, right? You're not feeling any pain here. Both hands gently pulling. Close your eyes. Deep in the breath. And then when you get to an exhale, come back to center. So it might look a little weird, but it feels pretty good, doesn't it? Okay, let go of the strap. Sit up tall. Turn your head to look over the right shoulder. Left hand is going underneath the dangling strap to grab the right side of the strap. Right hand is grabbing the left side. So again, the left hand's gonna get a little heavy. It's gonna start pulling down as I lift my right elbow, get this strap across my chin and I'm gently pulling back. As I pull back, I'm not taking the upper body into a twist. So be careful of that. It's, this is just for the neck.
Yeah, one more breath. Exhale, come back to center, remove your prop. Ah, sit up tall, but drop the chin down. Lift the chest. Bring the head to center, shoulders up, keep them there, drop the head back. Deep inhale, cleansing exhale. Take the shoulders back and down. How does that feel? Go ahead and move your head around a little bit. Hopefully it feels a little looser than when we started. All right, we're coming back to some seated shoulder work, but let's come down first. So can you grab your block? That's your pillow, put it behind you. Grab your blanket. I don't want my blanket too poofy. Um, so I'm gonna read fold mine. Just, you know, it's kind of like a flat rectangle. I'm going to put that, oh, I don't know, about a foot away from my block. So my upper side ribs are going to end up on the blanket. The block is for my head. The space in between is for my bottom arm, which we're going to start on the left side. So that's going to be your left arm. So, oh, actually, can you grab your bolster too? Let's make this really good. Okay. So come on down. Ah, just make sure this feels right. So I got there. I feel like I want to slide my blanket up just a little bit more. Yep. Okay. I'm going to grab that bolster and bring it between my knees. And this is kind of just simulating in a restorative pose. Uh, maybe how we could sleep to have better sleep, right? Pillows aren't just for under the head. Sometimes we need to support the body along the way. Now I want you to take that bottom arm and I want you to really reach it forward. So imagine I just grabbed your left wrist and I'm pulling the arm gently away from you. So my shoulder just slid out in front of me. Perfect. I'm going to bend the elbow so my fingers are facing up towards the ceiling. Okay. Right hand on the back of the left hand. So look down, make sure that this uh, upper arm is coming straight up from the shoulder. And my right hand's just gently gonna push my left forearm and hand down towards the ground. Now, I didn't say to the ground. It might go there. But, you know, as I get about here, I feel my shoulder popping up off of the mat and I don't want that. So this is just a gentle stretch. I can feel it running uh, up along the bicep into my shoulder not painful, just a stretch. If your arm goes all the way down, that's totally fine, but make sure it's not to the detriment of the shoulder and it's coming off of the earth. All right, we're gonna hold this for a moment, breathe. And then go ahead and slip that right arm. You know, you could just rest it on your side. And then we'll slowly bring the left hand back up towards the sky. I still have my elbow on the ground. And then I'm gonna let the arm flop in the other direction in a happy place. And then we're gonna close our eyes right here. Now it's restorative, right? And of course, if at any point in time, this is too much pressure on that bottom shoulder, switch it up. You could roll back just a little bit to relieve that. Um, you could come up higher on your blanket and your block. Later in our sequence, I'm gonna teach you a new mantra. Um, it's for sleeplessness, especially if you have insomnia. Um, I think you're gonna really like the sound of it because the way it flows off of the tongue, 
it sounds hushed, kind of like a nursery rhyme, kind of sleepy-ish. Um, I think you're going to enjoy it. We'll do that closer to Shavasana so I don't put you to sleep. And so when we sleep, I'm putting the word wrong in quotes. <laughs> it just doesn't, I don't know. I say it all the time, but when I thought about it, it just seems a little odd. Um, any part of the body could hurt. And we've got to work our way all the way down through the legs, right? So I want you to pull that right knee in towards you because definitely the hips could be um, part of this equation. You might even feel how this rounds out the low back. The low back frequently um, can be a problem when we sleep wrong. You know, when I Googled that, it came up with uh, got up on the wrong side of the bed, which to me is a completely different thing. To me, that's a mental state. Okay, take that right knee and let's open out the hip. If you want to, you can make circles with that knee. Uh, if you prefer to just hold still, that's fine. If you're going to do circles, will you switch it up every one or two? And then when you're ready, just bring that knee back down on top of the bolster or pillow. Close your eyes. And then will you think about how it would be easiest for you to get to your other side? Probably it's just rolling over. I'm going to have to switch directions. So take your time while I move all my props. Okay, so remember, as you stretch out that right arm, imagine I've grabbed the right wrist, I'm gently pulling it to draw that bottom shoulder out from underneath you. And then we're gonna bend the right arm, so elbow stays on the ground, fingers are facing up, my palm is facing toward my knees. Make sure that the upper part of the arm is coming straight out from the shoulder versus at an angle. And then left hand to the back of the right hand, and we're slowly going to explore and push this arm down. So on this side, for me, this arm's not quite as happy about this. I'm gonna hold it right here. Breathe. So in a moment, we're gonna talk about the word nidra in Sanskrit. It's going to sound familiar, right? If you've done yoga nidra, which translates to yogic sleep. Um, but the word nidra in conjunction with yoga is actually, it comes up in um, ancient texts way before it becomes known as a practice of its own. And so we'll kind of explore that. We'll explore uh, Devi nidra. Breathe. Can you feel that? All right, relax that left arm. Slowly bring the right hand back up and then let it continue its journey all the way to the ground in the opposite direction and just close your eyes, settle in.
relaxing, letting go. And we're going to open up that left hip. So will you draw the knee in, open the hip. And then again, you decide if you want to hold it here or if you want to help that leg make some circles. Ready, relax that leg back on top of the bolster, close your eyes. Give me a deep inhale, super loud exhale. And then Let's take our time coming back up, moving the props aside. Once you have everything off your mat, let's go ahead and come on over into table because cat cow is the best way to get the kinks out of the low back and mid back. So set your alignment and find your transition when you're ready. And you know, if you did have a um, painful night of sleep, you might wanna hold one of these poses for a little bit longer, depending on the stretch feels so don't feel like you have to transition on every breath and then let's come back to table tuck the toes find downward facing dog because that is a great all over body stretch you might want to walk it out And then right into Balasana, child's pose. So if you want uh, it to be supported, you can grab your props. If you want to just come straight down, you are more than welcome to do so. So the word nidra, in reference to sleep, it's not exactly, um, it's not sleep like when we go to bed. It's a higher level of awareness. It's a higher level of consciousness, kind of. And... Um, I think, don't quote me on this, but yoga nidra as a practice um, is rel relatively new. The term yoga nidra goes way back. Um, I'm not sure if the Mahabharata is the original, but it references um, how Vishnu would sleep between cycles of the universe and needing Nidra, Devi Nidra, the goddess of night to, to wake him up. Um, Nidra is mentioned in uh, ancient tantras, referencing um, 
peace, peace beyond imagination, peace beyond words, beyond uh, tangibility. Deep breath in. So one of the stories relating to um, Devi Nidra, the goddess Nidra, um, has to do with Lakshmana, who was looking over Lord Rama. And he was taking care of him. And he didn't want to sleep at night. He, he needed to be present. And... Um, the goddess Nidra kind of needed some balance between that wakefulness and, and sleep. And so Lakshmana's wife, Murmila, offered to sleep for him. And so she slept for 14 years um, while he was taking care of Rama. And then at the end of 14 years, they switch places. I'm just saying that is an interesting tactic with a marriage. I don't know any more about their story. I'm just going to leave it right there. <sighs> All right. I left you in a fabulous child's pose. Give me another deep inhale. Let go of the breath. And then will you walk your hands in towards you so you can sit back up and again, that's going to probably leave you sitting on your heels. If you want to stay there, that's fine. Actually, I think I will head there. But um, if you'd rather come down and sit differently, that is good, too. Grab your strap. You might not need it, but you might want it. And let's go ahead and I still have it folded in half. I'm going to take the um, end with the buckles just so that it doesn't hit me in the head. I'm going to drop that down over my right shoulder just like that, and I've got it hanging in front. All right, so inhale that right arm up. Let's pause here, let's lengthen without bringing the shoulder up, right? Now bend that top arm, let the hand fall behind you. So you might already know we're heading into cow face with the arms. Left hand comes around behind you and the hands are either grabbing onto each other or they're grabbing onto that strap that you so compassionately placed there, knowing you might need it. <sighs> so we're gonna try to sit up tall. Um, sometimes trying to force the arms into the, this position might cause some rounding out and dropping of the head to make room for the arms. We don't wanna do that. In which case I would much rather you grab that strap and slide the hands further apart And then let's follow the breath. Let's feel the right elbow lifting up toward the ceiling, bottom elbow pulling down. Try to stay with your breath. This is Gomukhasana. And then we'll let the fingers either separate or slip away from the strap. Just very slowly, heavily drop both arms, drop the head, and let's just hang out right here for a moment. And when you bring the head back up, we're just going to move that strap over to rest on the left shoulder. Inhale the left arm up. Lengthen, but relax that left shoulder as you bend the left arm. Hand goes behind you. 
Right arm's coming behind to either grab the hand or the strap. And then just kind of realign, sit up tall, draw the stomach in. Can you push the head back into the arm a little bit? Relax the arms, let them drop, let the head drop. And then bring the head back up. So go ahead and set that strap aside. Let's come down onto our back. Will you have a block nearby? Let's lay all the way down, hug the knees into the heart, which of course is another good relief for the low back. And then set the feet down. We're gonna set them a little bit wider than the hips. Interlace the fingers, take them behind the head. So arms are relaxed, elbows, shoulders, ah, feels good, right? Okay, just drop the knees to the left. Wherever they end up is good. Breathe. And then bring the knees back up. You know where we're headed, right? <laughs> Slowly to the other side. You might have noticed that I added a block underneath my left knee. If, if dropping the legs in this manner causes you knee pain, absolutely grab a prop to support that. Not to support the pain, to, to relieve the pain, but to support the knee. Let's go ahead and bring the knees back up, release the arms, and let's set our alignment for bridge. And 
And so just kind of working our way through the low back a little bit more. I want you to create an arch in the low back. Big inhale. Exhale, pull the back flat down to the earth. Hold the back right there. Inhale, lift the hips. Exhale, back down. Inhale, create the arch. Exhale, flatten the back. Inhale, lift. Exhale, down. Now you keep going at your own pace. You should definitely lengthen out the breath where you feel you can, um, but I don't want you holding the breath. So you'll know your pace. Do that cycle one more time. When you're done, reach for that block, slide it under the hips for supported bridge, and settle in. So hang with that breath, really keep your focus on it. When we're in yoga nidra, we, yes, it's, it is kind of a sleep state, kind of like Shavasana in my opinion, but in yoga nidra, we're not trying to fall asleep. That's not our intention. It's to stay focused, right? To stay focused on whatever the, the instructor is asking you to focus on. So while you probably know we're getting closer to Shavasana and your body's starting to settle into this quiet space, I still want you to be present. So follow that breath. So I'm gonna keep this as option A. 
Um, if you felt like in some of the other poses we did, it felt really good to round out the low back, then you might want to pull one knee in first, make sure you're balanced on your block, and then the other, and then you can kind of let the low back sink. I'm still balanced on the block, but there's this space you know, above the floor that my back has settled into and it just feels really good. If you desperately feel like you need to round out your back even more, you could come into the variation of plow where the knees end up on the forehead that is completely up to you. Don't turn your head in this pose like I just did to talk to you. So this actually feels really good. My back was in such chaos. I did not think this was going to be possible this morning. So you might give it a try and see what you think, but that's up to you. And so if you lift it up into plow, let's go ahead and slowly release back down, feet back on the earth, lift the hips up when you're ready, slide the block out, and then come on all the way down. So here, let's go ahead and stretch out the left leg. Let's take that right knee towards us and then across into a supine twist because you know that a twist is gonna feel good. Keep the right shoulder down on the ground. And maybe from everything we did starting off, the neck feels loose enough that you might be able to turn to look over the right shoulder. Let's go ahead and release that. Stretch the right leg out. Pause here to realign and close your eyes and take a deep breath in and let's hold that breath. Big exhale. All right, draw the left knee in and then across. that left shoulder down and if you want to turn to look over that shoulder. And gently release. Stretch out that left leg, bring the arms down alongside you. Deep inhale, we're gonna hold it. And let it go. All right, go ahead and roll into a fetal position.
And then you're just coming up long enough to grab your props. So push your way up, grab what you want for Shavasana. Go ahead, get set up, and then I'm going to teach you a new mantra. As you get settled, will you make sure the entire body is comfortable? And then, so we're going to chant this out loud. But what I like about the sound of this mantra is I think you'll find that you can let it get quieter and quieter until it sounds like a beautiful whisper. And then you can just let it slip away as you slip away into Shavasana. So, three words. Your first word, Om, of course, right? Om. The second word is Agasti. Agasti, go ahead and say that, Agasti. So we have Om Agasti. Om Agasti. Shahina. Shahina. Om Agasti. Shahina. Okay. So we'll go ahead and um, let's do call and response so that you can hear it. Um, And then what I would suggest is just keep going until you feel like you wanted to taper off. And who knows, I might decide to keep going so it sounds like a lullaby to you, um, but you can certainly drop off before I end. We shall see. So we have Om Agasti Shaina. All right. Om Agasti. Agasti Shaina Om 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 Agasti Shaina
as you bring your focus back to your breath, will you express some gratitude towards your body, toward the kinks that we worked out, toward the ones that for some reason want to stay with us. Breathing in gratitude, letting go of the breath. And if you like, you can invite some movement back into the body. And again, just an option. You can roll onto a side in a fetal position if you like, or you can stay where you are. And then will you join me again in the seated pose? Deep inhale through the nose. Cleansing exhale. Draw the shoulders up, let the head tip back slightly. And then as you take the shoulders down and back, drop the chin forward. Inhale the arms up, gaze will follow. Bring the hands together and exhale to the heart. The light in me bows to the light in you. And when I'm in that place in me and you're in that place in you, then we become one. Namaste.